Good evening, everyone. It's great to be with you uh, here again for evening prayer on Friday night. We hope you've had a good week uh, at this new level uh, 2.5. And we are back um, in our series on faith, hope and love. And tonight uh, our focus is on the best of them all, mm. on love. Yeah, we really hope your week is landing well and you're looking forward to the weekend. And it's such a privilege to be leading you in evening prayer uh, tonight. And we are talking about love. And love is a funny term because it's uh, so general. And um, I think our, our natural intuition, um, the way that we tend to sort of operate with love is that we love according to merit. Um, we sort of love intuitively the lovable. And what we really want to talk about tonight is actually how radical the Christian vision of love is, that it's really something quite different from how we think about love in, uh, generally. And uh, it's really infused by the whole economy of grace, the fact that God has loved us even though we were without merit, even though we were unlovable. And he asks us to enter into that same uh, currency of grace. And so one of the most amazing little books of scripture, in fact, it's the shortest uh, book in the whole of the Bible, is a little New Testament letter written by Paul, actually from prison called Philemon. And Philemon uh, was a bishop uh, in one of Paul's house churches. And what's really interesting about his name is that uh, it means loving in Greek. And so it's sort of an appropriate place uh, to look at actually how radical the whole Christian vision of love really is and what we're called to be part of. Uh, the letter's a really interesting one. Uh, Paul is writing to uh, Philemon because he had a sna slave called Onesimus. And Onesimus had run away from Philemon's household. Uh, which was a pretty uh, severe thing to have done. And in fact, it's punishable by death at, at that time. Somehow we learn in the story that uh, Onesimus has come to meet Paul while Paul is in prison. And through Paul's testimony, Onesimus has actually come to faith. And he's become like a spiritual son to Paul, uh, really, really close. And Paul does quite an amazing thing. He writes to Philemon and he says to him, look, I want you to receive Onesimus back into your household, back into the house church community, but not just as a returning slave, not uh, just to forgive him the sort of retribution and revenge that would have actually been rightfully, maybe even expected of uh, Philemon to uh, meet out on Onesimus, a returning slave. But Paul says, I want you to do something much more than that. I want you to receive him back, not as a returning slave, but as a Christian brother, uh, as an equal in the ministry. And I think what it shows us is just actually how radical the idea of Christian love is in this economy of grace, that actually uh, it changes everything that we do. Uh, it changes the people we love, it changes how we love them, and it changes what we do. We really love the way that Eugene Peterson introduces uh, this letter in his paraphrase, uh, The Message. And here's the way he uh, talks about this book. He says, Every movement we make to God has a ripple effect touching family, friends, neighbors, community. Belief in God alters our language. Love of God affects daily relationships. Hope in God enters into our work. None of these movements and responses, beliefs and prayers, gestures and searches can be confined to the soul. They spill out and make history. If they don't, they're under suspicion of being fantasies at best and hypocrisies at worst. I think this is something that we all need to sit and pause and really think about, is are we following the way of the world and just loving the lovable? Or are we following Jesus and actually having radically redeemed responses towards uh, the people that we encounter in our day-to-day -day lives. And this is a huge challenge actually for all of us, but the way that we uh, respond and interact with those that we find the most difficult is actually the true measure of, of how uh, much work God has done in each of our hearts. And so I love uh, the way that um, Eugene Peterson talks there about the love of God affecting our daily relationships. And, and I think that um, that's where we get to work this stuff out. That's where we get to practice, to have, uh, to believe the best of each other, to pause before we react. That's my hardest one. I'm a bit of a, a sort of instant reactor to things, but mm. to really just pause and say, God, I'm really annoyed by this situation or this thing's really riled me up. Um, before I 
instinctively react out of my default settings? Is there something that you want to uh, say to me first? And, um, you know, another practice that I, I try and sort of do is to actually pray for the person before uh, engaging with them if, if I'm really upset about something. And, you know, even in that act of laying uh, a relationship before God, uh, it does something in our hearts and it, it has this, uh, this trickle down, this knock on effect. Um, and so we want to really just implore all, all of us really to take the story of Philemon and Onesimus. It's absolutely radical and say, how do we work uh, that into the situations that we're facing at the moment, particularly uh, after this lockdown season, which I think has uh, really stretched all of us uh, to the limit. Um, we've certainly experienced that in our own home um, and then also uh, in our place of work too. It's, it's been a hugely challenging time. Mm. But God is the answer. He, he gets to give us that fresh perspective. And just as Paul says in that letter to Philemon, you're to see Onesimus first as your brother. And that actually changes everything. And so, Lord, as we come before you uh, tonight on Friday night, we thank you that you have loved us before we uh, step towards you, Lord, that you um, fill us with your grace. Uh, you've extended kindness and love to us. And Lord, we just acknowledge that um, we have the unlovable before us. We all have situations and relationships that we struggle with, uh, that we wrestle with, and we struggle to react well. Um, and to love well. And so, Lord, we just pray by your Holy Spirit that you would reveal to us those situations where you need to infuse us afresh with your grace. Uh, and we pray that you give us wisdom um, and creativity like Paul uh, to respond in these situations. So, Lord, right now, uh, as we leave some time, we just pray that you would raise to mind these people, um, uh, the unlovable for us right now. Uh, just put some names before us, Lord. And we pray as those names come up that you would uh, just extend to us a measure of your grace for these people. And Lord, we pray that you would give us wisdom and give us creative and gracious responses. Uh, show us a way forward, we pray, as we wait on your spirit. And so, Lord, we thank you for your radical grace. We thank you for examples like Paul and Philemon and Onesimus, Lord, who show us uh, a new way, a radical new way forward. And we pray for uh, these people that you've put before us, uh, that we've prayed for. Lord, may you bless them. Uh, may we know your grace flow through us as we respond to them and walk forward into what you have for us. And so, Lord, we pray for this weekend. Give us rest. Uh, may we have joy in our relationships in all that we do this weekend. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, well, thanks for joining us again for uh, evening prayer. Again, uh, next week, faith, hope, and love will keep going Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, we're also on Sunday, so I would love to see you there, Sunday, 10 a.m., and then again at 6.30. But have a great weekend. Uh, we hope you're doing well. God bless you heaps. Father, Son, and